It was so real, Alvin, she said, as real as this kitchen. That's where I was, here in the kitchen. I was cooking supper, and suddenly Bonnie walked through the door. She was wearing a blue Angora sweater, and she looked so sweet and pretty, and I said, oh, Bonnie, Bonnie, dear, I haven't seen you since that terrible thing happened. But she didn't answer, only looked at me in that shy way of hers, and I didn't know how to go on under the circumstances. So I said, honey, come see what I'm making Alvin for his supper, a pot of gumbo with shrimp and fresh crabs. It's just about ready. Come on, honey, have a taste. But she wouldn't. She stayed by the door looking at me. And then, I don't know how to tell you exactly, but she shut her eyes. She began to shake her head very slowly and wring her hands very slowly and a whimper or whisper. I couldn't understand what she was saying, but it, it broke my heart. I never felt so sorry for anyone, and I hugged her. I said, please, Bonnie, oh, don't, darling, don't. If ever anyone was prepared to go to God, it was you, Bonnie. But I couldn't comfort her. She shook her head and wrung her hands, and then I heard what she was saying. She was saying to be murdered. To be murdered. No. No. There's nothing worse. Nothing worse than that. Nothing. <laughs>